103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is October 18th, 2020. Uh, I'm Larry Rhodes, your daughter five, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Life is like a hurricane here in... Duckburg. Knoxville. Knoxville, right. let's go, yeah! <laughs> and our guests today are Wave When You uh, Hear It, uh, Doubtfire, a Red Leader, and Red Pirate Higgs. Welcome all. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, and rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show break. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call-in video show here in Knoxville? Did you know that, Wombat? Mentioned yeah. On the and, air. and what's great is they actually made a reboot of DuckTales recently. So if you want to get back Duck into Tales. the series, it's going to be really good. I think they have Ben Schwartz as one of Huey, Dewey, or Louie. I can't tell them apart. But they're really good, and I highly recommend it. Disney's yeah, doing a I really fantastic too, job with their That's not movie. our show. Well, that's not it. You haven't found it yet. After 10 years, you haven't well, found a show. After 10 years? How long have we been doing this show, Larry? <laughs> 10 years. No, wait. Anyway. It's not been 10 years. Don't make me feel bad. Has it really been 10 years? It might actually it be. It's been actually over 10 No years. way. Don't make actually, me feel bad. Yeah. Gosh. Anyway, we'll tell you more about that yes. after the mid-show break. Uh, right now, if you'd like to interact with us during the show, and it's Sunday morning, October, what was it again? 18th. 18th. At 11... Eastern, uh, you can do so by going to Digital Free Thought Radio, our Facebook page, and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Uh, Wombat, what's our topic today? Today, we're going to be talking about a really awesome um, question that Doubtfire himself proposed, which is, can a contradictory God logically exist? And I think that's going to be really awesome. There's my cat in the background. Hey, what's up, buddy? Look, Ben, what's up? How you doing? But before we go into it, I'm going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Our pasta, our tuna colander, hallowed be thy noodles, thy sauce be rum, thy blood be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us their stay, our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some pasta. For thine are the noodles, the pasta, and the sauce, whenever and ever. Ramen. Ramen. It's hard, so hard not to crack up during that. It really is. <laughs> Dread, I want to go around, see how everyone's doing. Uh, we missed you last week. How you been? Where were you? Or was you doing something awesome? Something hey. <laughs> Well, like I said, I, uh, I performed a wedding uh, the day before and, uh, you know, carried on a bit. So uh, I didn't wake up until <laughs> 1030 my time, which is two and a half hours after the show starts. So Right. Canadian beer tends to have that effect on people. Though, how <laughs> is a Pasifarian wedding and how does it differ from, say, like the more traditional, uh, I would say, Christian variety? Well, actually, uh, it wasn't a Pasifarian wedding. I am a, oh. I'm actually a, an appointed marriage commissioner through the uh, Ministry of Vital Statistics. So it was a, a traditional wedding, um, but, uh, you know, they still carry on. Okay. Well, that's still beautiful. That's still beautiful. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Doubtfire, loving that shirt. You got to I, – I, salmon is an unappreciated color on men. And I, and, I, and I respect that people re represent that. And I will go to the gym representing that all the time. How you been? Doing good, man. Doing wonderful. Where exactly do you do your uh, videos from? It looks like you're outdoors enjoying like a really nice sunny yeah, day. Yeah, I'm right here, right here on the uh, porch of my uh, uh, place here. And see all looks that. Like, looks like beautiful Santa Monica. <laughs> Yeah, it's in um, Irvine, California. Nice, nice. Oh, it's pretty close. Oh, my, my mm -hmm. nostalgia. My nostalgia. I grew up in California, so it's just like. Uh, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Nice. All right. Uh, Larry, how you been? Yeah. Like I said, looks like uh, viewers can't see or listeners to the podcast can't see this, but it looks like you got a really nice specific uh, haircut going on. Oh, nice yeah. little mane in the well, back. I haven't had a haircut in like four months. Uh, most of it's behind me. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <just> mm-hmm. <laughs> push it behind me. Nice, but, nice, uh, nice. Yeah, I don't go to barbershop because of COVID. I don't want some, someone standing that close to me cutting my hair. Yeah. Uh, my daughter said she'd cut it for me, but she's yet to make an appointment for me. So I'm waiting on yeah. that. I, I'm trying to stay away from people to embrace social distancing. I was at the gym yesterday and literally empty everywhere except for one dude who decides to do the elliptical literally right next to me and there's like oh, really? other ellipticals <laughs> in the row but he picked the one right next to me and the whole time i'm like what is going on with this guy <laughs> like Look at him, no mask like, no what's it, nothing whatsoever and just focusing on his workout so like some people just need to be competitive with the person right next to him to be motivated to do gym work it's like, dude i'm not a, i'm not a part of your program get me out of here dale yeah. good to see you again your beard is coming in beautifully, by the way. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. I've, I've been yeah. working very hard on it. Good, good. It's yeah. like uh, You're the one without facial hair. Reached its new level. <laughs> yeah. You're going to so, have to grow a beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or get a snap <laughs> camera thing to just take it off when it's too inconvenient yeah. to shave. <laughs> Doubtfire, I want to throw this out at you because you presented a really awesome topic for uh, talking today. And that it seems like science is opinion on gods is we don't have an opinion because we can't measure gods but that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a god however it also doesn't mean that we know for a fact that we can say that there is no god so it's just a complete unknown but that that said we do understand logic and so if you have a god that defies logic that's problematic and makes us more inclined to say that god probably doesn't exist and you phrase it as like well can a contradictory god logically exist would you mind talking about that? Because I think that's really, really interesting. Yeah, sure. So I think um, when we make statements, uh, contradictory statements, then they can't be true hmm. because they don't, they don't, can't exist in reality as the way that you describe it. So if you have a God that's, that's um, blue, but he's also red. Or blue and not blue. blue or not blue, or maybe a square circle, you have a married bachelor type of God, then you've got a problem. So, yeah, and, and I've actually been talking to a lot of um, Jehovah Witnesses this week about that, co- that topic. That's why I brought it up because, um, you know, kind of going through the uh, normal questions that I have for Jehovah Witnesses doesn't seem to always uh, work. So I kind of did an internal critique and asked questions based on seeming contradictions to see what they would say. And it kind of stumped them. And then using the logic that, you know, if there's a contradiction, it can't logically exist. And they would agree from the outset. So then if you show them a contradiction of, about their God, Jehovah, then it raises questions. And that's what's the whole point. What kind of contradictions are you talking about? I thought Jehovah was yeah. perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, we have, script. you know, they, they go by strictly the scriptures. So if you go to John 4, 9, it'll say God is love or the Greek word agape. Um, first Corinthians 13, four would say, uh, love or agape is not jealous and it's not wrathful, hmm. but then you could read in Exodus 34, 14, that, uh, Jehovah, whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Hmm. And that's pretty good. Deuteronomy four. Yeah. So you've got a big problem right there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that, that's an example of a uh, seeming contradiction. Same thing with um, Islam. Um, Islam in Surah al alaq 96 verse 2 would say, God created man out of congealed blood. But in another spot in 1526, it would say he created man from clay. And then also he created man from a drop of sperm in 16.4. So we've got a big contradiction there. 
So how can all of those things be true? So one of those statements are wrong, but if you're gonna accept all of them as absolutely true, which they do, then it just can't be something you can um, take as reality. Nice. Larry, I'll throw this out at you first. Do you think there are contradictions with how God is depicted in the Bible or any other holy texts? And should that be credence to reduce your confidence in whether or not that God exists? And how much time do you have? I, <laughs> well, apparently we had 10 years to go over this. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, yeah, there's a few contradictions. Uh, let's just take uh, one of them, I guess. Um, God it's is not like you wrote a book on the subject or something. Well, I mean, we're supposed to have free will. One of the biggest uh, problems or one of the biggest claims of Christianity is that we have free will and we have to choose right or wrong. And God, and God has given us the criteria and all that stuff. But if God knows everything, if he's an omni-God and he's omniscient, he knows everything that everybody is ever going to not only do, but think. Um, and if that's true, then there is no free will because we all, you know, have to come conform with what he has already thought we're going to do. Hmm. Uh, so there's no free will. And it goes even farther. If he knows literally everything, then he knows what he's going to do, what he's going to think, and all of his actions in the future. So he has no free will. So that's a contradiction right there. Uh, I also I feel like on a on, God that gives somebody feel, else a chance. I feel generally also like a God that knows everything essentially set this test up to fail if this is a hey i'm waiting for you to do the thing that i know you did <laughs> that i know you're already going to do so i can mm -hmm. punish you for it after you've already there's, done it so not only are the so victims still getting things. punished through yeah. the person's the actions of Eden alone. yeah like not only are the victims still getting hurt but the person it, that's doing the crime is free to do the crime while god watches and is like ooh, i'm going to keep letting you do this assault and only until you're done, am I going to be like, ooh, I have a perfect plan for you that I already planned ahead of time because I already had planned for you to do that assault. Ooh, it's such a, such a, such a terrible thing. Not a thing that a benevolent God would do, yet he claims to be benevolent no. at the same time, too. No. Dread, welcome, George. Uh, welcome, George. Hello, can, can you all hear me? Yeah, you're coming yep. in just great. Mm -hmm. George, just to catch you up, we're talking about, is it possible for someone to believe in a, uh, uh, is it, is it contradictory God? capable of logically existing, right? And so we're talking about some contradictions of gods that are depicted, you know, in popular contexts and asking, okay, since there's a contradiction here, is that credence for us to reduce our confidence that this God exists? Because right now we have science that can't test gods and can't say, hey, this God exists, this God doesn't exist. We don't have a god meter But we can look to see if this God is contradictory <laughs> and say, logically, this doesn't make sense. Like, the nature of this God would have to change in order for it to be applicable to reality. Dread Pirate, I want to throw this out at you. Um, do you have contradictions that you can think of with regard to popular gods? It doesn't even have to be about the Christian God. Does the Pasiferian God have contradictions? <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Uh, the, uh, the flying screen <sighs> monster is perfect. Yeah, there's no contradictions there. <laughs> really? Really? Is, 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 to who? Yeah, is fully, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, I got some contradictions. I'll throw some things out at you. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so here, here's the thing. Um... So Pasiferian God, I'm sure, is open to um, all forms. Does Pasif... Okay, here's a stupid question. Does Pasiferian <laughs> God eat bacon? <laughs> oh, of course. Okay, okay. So he's... Well, he's he, cre he created bacon, so... Okay, pro-carbs and protein? Like, what's going on there? Seems like a contradiction. Pro-carbs, pro-protein, uh, pro-beer, pro-inches. <laughs> I feel I didn't it, that last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like is is the Pasiferian God generally a progressive God or is it just like a non kink shaming God? Like it doesn't seem like there's a there's a problem either way. Like how do you interpret the idea of a stripper factory and, and wenches and stuff like that? How do you how's that go part and parcel? Well, when you when you say progressive, I don't know what you mean. Like in uh, in really equal, relation equal to appreciation of equal rights of all sexes, stuff like that. Oh yeah. Well, well, strippers are are not, you know, forced. It, it's not a sex thing. <laughs> you know, there's male strippers, there's female strippers, there's okay. unisex strippers. Um, okay, it's not about genitalia. It's it's about stripping. 
Yeah. They're animal strippers. <laughs> oh man. Favorite. You're getting closer. <laughs> we're, we're getting to a rabbit hole here. Uh, how about, how about the more uh, commonplace gods? Can you think of like uh, common contradictions that it could be found with regard to like Jehovah, Allah, and maybe well, Greek gods and think, oh, go for it. I, I, I mean, the, the idea that God is, is all love, mm. um, but was capable of, you know, creating the angels, the devil being one of them, who is uh, the, um, you know, the font of evil. So mm. that's a pretty big contradiction, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. It, definitely something that makes me reduce my confidence. Dale, here's my question for you. I'm not sure if you're aware of more broader or older terms of gods, like from Roman or Greek pantheons, but the idea of like having multiple gods gave you the ability to have very vulnerable and, and poor gods that are very human in nature, like gods that were jealous, spiteful, revengeful, terrible beings. And when Christianity came out, it's like, hey, you don't need all these different gods you can talk to. We have this one big God that's already perfect, which is better than your, you know, assembly of gods that are each imperfect in their own way. And and that caught on along with a lot of swords and blood and spilling. But but the idea of like, hey, you know, Ares, this guy has some problems. He has daddy issues. <laughs> But his contradictions are at least relatable. Do you think, like, if you have a contradictory God, as is, does that make it more emotionally more uh, able to relate to? Like, is imp are, do gods have to be perfect? That's basically what I'm asking you. Or is it possible to actually fall more in love with a God that actually has some, you know, chips on its shoulder and and obvious problems? I have no idea what you just asked me. Cool. I will, Move however, on. make a comment. <laughs> will, however, make a comment. Uh, Kerry Kinthaw, who is a predominant metaphysician, uh, his first law of metaphysics is nothing unreal exists. So that's all I got to say about this comment. This cool. I, Doubtfire. I have no throw, idea what you're talking Doubtfire, about. I want to throw that question out at you. Do you think that a God that is not perfect is actually more relatable? And maybe we're putting too much stress on the biblical God having contradictions. Like, does a, does a contradictory God actually make it more appealing? We have, you know, a president that's not very <laughs> logical in the first place. People tend to love him. Do you think that's the appeal? Um, it could be. Um, people like superheroes in comic mm. books. And those seem to be like the kind of gods that are comparable to the Greek gods and pagan gods. They're not perfect, right. but they're yeah. super, they're meta, they're all these things. Um, but I think in our culture today, we people tend to gravitate more towards the all omni god, you know, mm. um, because it, it, it has more explanatory power, they think. Mm for things that they have mysteries or things they want to know about. Yeah. I also wonder, like, maybe the appeal of Jesus is that you get the best of both worlds. You have the omnipowerful God, but then you also have the human who understands the human experience, who gets angry and really hates fig trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, he kind of avatar. Yeah. George, why don't you take yourself off mute and uh, uh, join in? I saw you wanted to sit chip in. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... <laughs> The contradictory God, um, I like your concept of a Godometer. <laughs> I, I want one. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, it would be so great if I did. <laughs> yeah, can I buy one? Zero, you know, <laughs> we don't have Radio Shack anymore. Can I buy one on Amazon? I mean, I, I really want a Godometer. You it know, would always uh, register zero, though. I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be much help. <laughs> You know, and, and I mean, do they make them in China? And, and can I buy it on Amazon? But but um, you know, the to me, it's like the God of the Old, Old Testament is like Donald Trump. Is Donald Trump the God of the Old Testament? And our people gotta give me some words. Got to give me some words. What do you mean by that? I mean the erratic behavior, the the vindictiveness, mm. you know, the the uh, he, he's like a dysfunctional father. That's about that's about as much as I can underscore on this because every time I try to read the Bible, I fall asleep. Mm. I have not been very successful at reading the Bible. Well, here here's my because I, I fall asleep. Yeah. 
and we'll go to Scott right after this. It seems like the God of the Old Testament is very much the flavor of gods that are around during that time, which were very much, I'm powerful and I'm telling you what needs, needs to be done as an authority figure to you. And then as we get to the New Testament time, it's like, man, these Romans are really, really, really destroying a lot of stuff. We need a sympathetic God that like understands us and is willing to forgive some of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Perfect, Jesus. And now we have almost like a new, new version of God, which is like, he loves the, he loves the math rock that you love. He loves, <laughs> he has no problem with gay people. <laughs> he wants you to go out and just, you know, love people and be okay. And maybe it's spiritual, maybe it's not spiritual, but hey, you know, reach out and make friends. Scott, what do you think? Yeah, I was uh, just to kind of piggyback on what you just said. Um, it seems like the gods come from. So, if you were to take a look at, say, um, ancient Hebrew culture, right? Mm. Um, you know, slavery in the Middle East was a was a common practice. Yeah, and so God, Yahweh, or Jehovah back then um, allowed for slavery and regulated the practice of slavery. And so this is kind of a contention point um, with a lot of Christians today, as you just pointed out, because that idea of humans owning other humans is mm. considered immoral nowadays relative to our culture today. And so such, um, so by bringing that up, you're, you're kind of like bringing up a contradiction yeah. because they just can't imagine that God would would ever allow something immoral like slavery. Yeah. And he is the, you know, and God is defined as a Jehovah witness told me last week, Jehovah is morality. He is um, ethics. So in it's absolute, he's immutable. He's absolute. Yep. He's the metaphysical primary, as they told me. The so, metaphysical prime. Wow, you yeah, know maybe. these terms really well. Wow, wow. That's yeah. A oh yeah. I beautiful word that means nothing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> it's, next time someone asks me what so I do for a living, word. I'm just gonna be like, I'm the metaphysical primary of my uh, organization. It's like, oh, yeah. Whoa. Excuse me. <laughs> wow, that's important. Yeah. Uh, Larry, you want to uh, fill in? Yeah, I was I was just gonna say maybe Dale when he talks to his JW people, uh, he's been has the lady he's been talking to uh, a bit. He could bring up slavery and ask her about that. Uh, yeah. No, one of the oldest uh, illogical uh, attributes of God, as we see it, was uh, addressed by Epicurus and his riddle of Epicurus. Uh, uh, it says, if God is willing to prevent evil but not able, then he's not omnipotent. Mm. If, he's not, if he's able to prevent evil but not willing, then he's malevolent. If he's able and willing, then why do we have evil? If he's neither able nor willing, then why do we call him God? That right. type of thing. So it, it, this uh, riddle has stood the test of time for over 2,500 years. Yeah. But there's one other thing that has come up recently in some of my conversations that is, uh, points to a non-evil caring God is that people will tell you that evil cannot exist in the presence of God. You know, he's so good that no evil can exist near him. But then they also tell you he's everywhere Yeah. at once, all the mm. time. And evil so where exists. does evil come? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's good. That's I'll tell you another. That's inconsistent right there. Dred, you're next on the uh, so let's spot our contradictories problems. But here's mine uh, that I like. The idea of worship or the contradiction of worship. And the idea behind this is anything that is deserving of worship would not ask to be worshiped. And it's as simple as that. And so worshiping is essentially putting something above you and lauding it as a thing greater than yourself and doing whatever you can to appreciate it and like loving it more, more so than Constant like praise. your car, mm -hmm. your, your wife, your mom's like, this is worship. I am worshiping this being that be on me. Uh -huh. Anything that's actually mm -hmm. truly benevolent or deserving of worship wouldn't ask you to do that or want it or expect it or like demand Buddha. it. <laughs> <laughs> Buddha has its own problems saying we could, Hey, you want to talk about contradictories with Buddha? Like, yeah. let's talk about women's rights in Buddhism. It's, it's essentially non-existent. But uh, uh, no one gets a free pass here on the, on the digital free thought hour. But yeah, like if you, there's a being that's asking to be worshipped, it's typically not worth demanding. Being demanding yeah, to yeah. be worshipped. Yeah, on, on for sake of punishment. Where, where, yeah. like, where was Jesus on this? 
Where was Jesus on what? Where was Jesus on being worshipped? I think all so. Over like the place. all over the place. Yeah, um, Scott, why don't you fill in? Yeah. So Jesus says, "I am the way, the truth, and the life." Yeah, I'm the sword. There's no way to get to the Father except through me. Which, by the way, creates a contradiction in Islam. Now that we're talking about contradiction, contradictory gods. So. Um, uh, and Muslims will say that Jesus was a truth teller. He spoke nothing but truth because he was God's prophet. Yet Jesus said, no one comes through the Father except through me. I'm the Savior. So Muslims, the Quran says that, no, Jesus was not a Savior or a Messiah. He was just a prophet. So now we have a contradiction. So was God telling the truth or was Jesus telling the truth or was he not? Yeah. <laughs> and if it's possible for so, people to get it wrong, how so do you know you so got much. it right? There's so much stuff going on here. Dread, I was going to give it to you, but he's now, all, he, he just went off the, oh, he's back. Dread, anything else you'd like to weigh in on? Um, yeah, I was, uh, well, you know, uh, Scott was explaining there uh, different um, ideas about how Jesus uh, demanded worship. And there is the one, um, one verse there where, uh, those who would not, um, essentially, those who would not kneel down and, and worship me, bring them before me, so so that I may slay them. Um, that's a pretty big uh, contradiction for uh, a guy preaching all love, right? Yeah. And how many times has he referenced himself as the sheep herder among sheep, and that you guys have to come to his flock? Like that mentality of like, I am a, I am a essentially a, a better organism than you you need to come to me if you want help. Like there's on the order of magnitude of a sheep to a sheep herder. <laughs> That's how he saw himself to other people. <laughs> he is making some really big ass. Uh, go for it, Dread. Yeah, so just one comment here from uh, one of our viewers, uh, Data's Trading Room. He says, logic would imply that if evil cannot exist in his presence and he is all transcendent, then what we consider evil is actually God's love. Yeah. Oh, ooh, that went dark, Dada. Doubtfire, going ahead, way in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that took a drop. So this is so... <laughs> Larry, yeah, so that, we... that was dark even for me. And I yeah. end every series going like, you're going to somebody else's hell. <laughs> who, made, who made that comment? The Joker? No. No, Dada's trading so, right over uh, <laughs> Nice so one, Dada. I was going to say that it, it kind of goes into the definition of God and... Um, some people would say, well, God is that thing that um, you worship that is worshipable or mm -hmm. or qualifies to worship. You know, it's my God. Money is my God. This is my God. You know, the universe is my God. It's the sun. It means that it's worthy of worship is God is one definition people use for God. But if that's true, and if God is also the first cause of everything that exists, including evil, then does that qualify as something worthy of worship? Do you worship something that would create evil? I mean, really? Yeah. So, I mean, well, maybe. Maybe some people are just like that. I don't know. One thing I find uh, with a lot of the religious believers that I talk to is that they're not familiar with the concept of not worshiping. They, you know, they'll come to an atheist and say, uh, you worship uh, Dan Barker. Or you worship, I mean, yeah. Somebody is the the god of the, the prophet of atheists, and you worship them. We don't worship anybody. We don't believe in the concept generally of of worship. Uh, you know, why would we all praise anything uh, at any time? I. I once had a Indian girlfriend and we were talking and she was saying like, you're an American, like, who do you worship? And I was like, I don't worship anyone. And she's like, right. well, what do you mean by that? Who do you worship? It's like, I don't worship anyone. And it's just like, so like, uh, Jesus, <laughs> it's like, no one, it's like, no one, no one, literally no one. no one. And it took a while. We were sitting in front of each other and it just like took a while for me to like, after the third time to be like, Oh, you don't worship anyone. I remember, I remember her response. Like, that's fantastic. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this person. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's its own topic that's its own yeah. topic eric it's welcome. so good to see you yeah. good, good welcome to see you, who do you up, worship yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh we're actually gonna head out to a break and then we'll come back and we'll get boudreaux's thoughts on this amazing topic that scott uh brought up Dr um doubter five why don't you take us out sure 
This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five and this is Sunday morning, uh, October 18th. 2020. Let's talk about the atheist and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, founded in 2002. We're in our 18th year. ASK has over a thousand members, and you can find us online at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Star, Star one. one. Star one. Star one. Another large free thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee. Just go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist Call and TV show. Well, it's kind of a streaming audio. Now we were on TV for 10 years, but now we've got a YouTube channel. It's called Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Uh, go to YouTube and search for that. And if you want to see our archives of the old TV show, search for Free Thought Forum Knoxville. Okay, also, if you're interested in joining us or getting involved in the TV or the radio show, uh, come to our Facebook pages or ASK Facebook page, the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or the Free Thought, what is it, uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour uh, Facebook page and let us know you want to be involved. And where do we leave off there, Wombat? So we were right in our second half of our Jeopardy challenge. Uh, Eric was leading with an amazing $5,000, but now we have our next question coming up to the bat. I want everyone to pay <laughs> very, 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 very close attention. The question today is, this is a powerful emotion that recently get lost. <laughs> I was rushing to write this one out. Got lost. All right. We're going to throw this up to uh, Dread Pirate. It looks like he's chiming in. Uh, Dread Pirate, what is your answer? Remember to answer in a phrasable question. Go. Oh, Dread Pirate. Out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I No one else got the answer. That was the last one. It looks like Eric's our champion. The right answer was, where is the love? Oh, the love. <laughs> there is the, the love, love, the love, the love, the listener love. All right, so it was a deer uh, in the headlights, sir. <laughs> it's okay. God it's okay. is love. You can you can come back in the next. <laughs> Yeah, you can so tell we are actually going to go over uh, some listener feedback that we had. We had some good episodes. I had the page up right now. I'm sorry for you guys being so unprofessional. Let me, uh, we had like seven comments from the last show. Uh, the last show's topic was, let me just pull it up here. I had a near death experience. <laughs> and we Ooh. talked about how reliable our near death experiences and the people who claim to have them. Uh, and we got a number of chats or a number of comments. Uh, the comments are, of course, posted on my YouTube channel. That's Let's Chat on YouTube. Just search for Let's Chat. I'm one of the first things that pop up now. Uh, Dada, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Iash139 or Iash139 says, Hey, Tyrone, I don't know how old you are, but when you were talking about Haley's comment, you might have been referring to Hale Bop's comment because Haley's comment was in 1986, whereas Hale Bop's comment was in 1996 and won't return for a few thousand years. <laughs> Oh, no. So I did mention I had seen Halo Bop's, or I said Haley's comment, but I guess I meant Halo Bop's comment. And that showed up when I was like around uh, 11 or so. So that's cool. That's cool. And it won't show up for another thousand years. So I'm glad I saw it when I did. Uh, Nathan Matthews has love for Doubtfire and George versus love for Doubtfire. Good points, Doubtfire. During this episode, it's always helpful to have terms be defined. Real in the context of a near-death experience can simply mean an experience that had an impact. And acknowledging someone's position is a great way to start a wonderful conversation. 
And here's some love for George. George, I share your hesitation with unfamiliar topics. I tend to sit back and listen. In healthy settings, I'm trying to push myself to form and share my own thoughts. Conjecture is a word, as in just another word for hypothesis. So it's okay as long as we continue to challenge ourselves and you have my full support. That's really nice. Scott Williamson, that sounds a familiar. That sounds like a familiar guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was that about? That was me. <laughs> yeah, Scott says, wow, looking back at the video, my devil's advocate for near-death experiences or aliens seems pretty strong. I almost seem like someone who believes in the afterlives and little green men. That wasn't the overall impression. Yeah. I just wanted to leave my thoughts here, okay. though. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And, and yeah, I was kind of cringing. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You, it sounded good. And plus, like I said, I think you texted me ahead of time asking to be a devil's advocate in these talks. And that's what exactly. All right. So uh, let me do one, other, one last check. Data's trading room, ever the faithful. Uh, if you hadn't said anything about rattling audio in the background, which there was some in the last episode, I never would have caught it. So you guys did good. Oh, wow. I did it. Okay. He, he wanted to make a mention about ghosts, though. We made a comment that it's whenever you feel very cold, it's a ghost passing over you. And so his response to that was, oh, wow. So now I know why it gets cold at fall. <laughs> <laughs> Mass migration of ghosts. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> real talk. Um, I was in I was in bed. Uh, uh, we were starting to get cold snaps through Tennessee just this week. And I was literally shivering in my bed because I like to keep it really cold. And I'm like, why am I so cold? I remember this conversation and even that comment. I'm like, there must be ghosts in my room. Ha ha ha. Anyway, <laughs> comforters will stop that. It's no big deal. All right. So we were talking about contradictions in the Bible and particularly related to the, the subject of God. And the reason why we were saying that um, and I'm, I'm directing this towards Eric because we were saying science doesn't have an opinion on whether or not a God does exist or does not exist. We don't have a God meter, right? But we can look at the God claim and see if there's contradictions there. And if there's contradictions, we can at least say logically, it doesn't make sense for this thing to exist. We can reduce our confidence based on how many contradictions we can find with a particular God claim. And the Bible is a really, really big book of God claims that along with many other holy texts, but we, we are all people here, Western, we tend to really know the Bible very well and it's very popular. So it's, it's worth knocking down a couple of pegs. Eric, would you mind um, if you had any contradictions that you can think of um, presenting some that makes you less confident about the God that's proposed in the Bible? Yeah, well, I, I'm I'm kind of with with George on on uh, religion in that I, I've I was raised Catholic, but I never really studied much, so I don't know a ton about the Bible. I've never actually read it. Um, You're Catholic uh, and you never read the Bible. It. That never happens. Right. That's really right. Bad. Yes, that's a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> no, it, and and uh, no, I've I've read parts and chunks of it. Yeah. Read a lot about interpretations of it. So I'd say the one that jumps out at me the most. If, I mean, obviously, the time frame of everything is one. We're just talking specifically about God claims. Hmm. Um, the fact that it kind of, the Bible seems to kind of flip between monotheistic or the fact that you know I'm the only God, or, or, or there are other gods. You know, you know, hmm. you should not worship other gods. But then again, right. other parts of the Bible make it seem like God is the only one, and 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 the whole idea that the the devil can stood up to God and, and, and did so, so powerfully such that he had <laughs> to ban him to hell. It just seems like, you know, like, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'd say the big one would be, um, would be that, that, uh, I mean, how many gods are there or were there or mm. any of that? So it's that's, weird that's when someone tells you, wife. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, Hey, you're my only girlfriend, but don't talk about my other girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, yeah, there is, there is a, I think in the commandments, it's like, don't worship any other God before me. It's like, what do you mean other gods? It's like, I am also the only God. It's like, what? George, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't, that was Boudreaux, right? Um, I, I don't know what to say about that. He, he said he, he's like me, but um, I was raised with no religion. Yeah. Well, that, I guess that's yeah. what I meant. I, I, I mean, I'm like you in that. I don't, I didn't grow up with, with, super knowledge of the Bible. I'm not, I'm not the first one to be able to jump in and, 
and and quote oh, I see. Bible. I just I just yeah. I have really no frame of reference, and I hear you say that a lot on the show. So I was well, to... yeah, I, I I don't. You know, when I was six years old, my mother said to me, she said, "Look, we've got only so much money. I'll give you Hebrew lessons." Or music lessons. Which do you want? What the hell kind of a choice is that? Music, please, please, please. <laughs> so, oh. so I became a child prodigy <laughs> in music. Did I become a child prodigy in Hebrew? Hell no. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, so, it, 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 it does kind of seem like the Bible teaches um, a plurality of gods in some sections. I think the Hebrew word uh, Elohim is a plural word for God. Oh, and so, geez. Lord of hosts. Like, yeah, yeah, so like when you read in Genesis, let us create man in our image, like who is he referring to? What other gods were there that were creating right. things? And the, the, the Hebrew word was Elohim. And that's why we have the translation, we, in our, and it follows throughout many different verses. But then in other sections, you hear about um, uh, uh, God as the um, singular. So you have the word, the Y-H-W-H, uh, which is short form for Yahweh or Jehovah. And so in those sections, God is the only God, the monotheistic God. So a lot of scholars that I've read about tend to think that the Bible, the Old Testament Bible was kind of cobbled together from earlier texts. Mm -hmm. And it came from a Canaanite religion that worshiped Elohim. That's where the word actually comes from. So Israel came from Cana Canaanites and it just gets, you know, really contradictory there. Yeah. Like plurality. Larry, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of started talking off about or talking about illogical gods per se with, you know, the attributes of the gods being illogical. But now we kind of got off into the Bible contradictions. And since we've opened that up, I'd like to offer at least one. Um, and the one <laughs> is a, a, a basic uh, contradiction, uh, illogical. Uh, it's the original sin. Yeah. Uh, where God, I mean, uh, God tells Adam and Eve not to eat the apple and they eat the apple. Yeah. But the apple contains the knowledge of right and wrong, good and right. evil. Right. right. So they wouldn't have even known that disobedience was wrong or bad yeah. or evil. But a knowledgeable they God, ate the apple. a benevolent and knowledgeable God if, would have known that. Right. Yeah. And That's if he had wanted them to know the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, so that they would understand not to eat the apple, he would have just given them the knowledge that they had been forgiven. I mean, mm -hmm. forbidden to get. So it makes no sense. It's and they're perfect. They were yeah. story. perfect beings. And it's and it's not a surprise on God's part that that happened. And if he claims to be benevolent, yet trap made such an obvious trap. It's like putting a snake, a poisonous snake in the playground for with a bunch of kids. It's just like, well, let's see what happens. It's like you clearly put a trap right. door in paradise. That's no longer paradise. Speaking of paradise. Is like, there free will in heaven? Yeah. And he's oh, supposed to be he, everywhere. So I, where was he when the snake was tempting Eve? Watching <laughs> it, probably controlling the snake. <laughs> probably just like yeah. doing that. It was stuff. a trap. Yeah, it was, it was a trap. trap. Uh, I want to talk about heaven for a quick bit or paradise because we just brought up the idea that Heaven can be a great place to be for eternity with the mindset of there's also a hell. So like if people go to heaven, how, what is the nature of a person that can go to heaven that's okay with a hell existing where people are burning for all of eternity, right? Like that seems to be contradictory. Like how can you be so good to go to heaven but be okay and complicit with the idea of hell at the same time? Hell right. is e Heaven's either <clears throat> empty completely empty or fill, or heaven is hell because those are the worst people in the world that i'd rather be with and if i had the choice i'd be like oh i don't want to go to a place where people are okay with yeah. people burning for all of eternity i saw a lot of hands raised uh that fire did you want to say something yeah i was just going to say really quick heaven doesn't seem to be the place that 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 it's purported to be in other mm. places in the bible like in revelation there's no sorrow there's no tears there's no suffering heaven is just blissful but then we read about how there was war in heaven yeah and satan was cast out like if there can be war in heaven and war is full of suffering and tears and death and like, how does that not be a big contradiction? So, man, these are some great I contradictions. Mm. George, it sounded like you want to weigh in as something. Well, do you remember what you were going to say? 
or wanted to say? I forgot. I forgot what. Oh yeah. I mean, to me, um, the the whole concept of hell is so bizarre. I mm. mean, if 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 God is God. Why does he put up with this? You know, why does he put up with the devil? This is all bullshit. This doesn't make hey, any sense. Hey, hey, wordy dirties. Guess who's on mute? Boo. Oh. <laughs> Which rope? What's our time set? The old, the old radio man blew it again. Oh, uh, there we go. You're, un you're uncurable, George. Uh, Boudreaux, what do you got? Uh, did you want to weigh in on this as well? I, I really like Doubtfire's point about is there free will in, in uh, Garden of Eden or heaven or any of the places that that's interesting to me because um, if there is free will, um, wouldn't have God known that these people were going to make these choices? Um, and if there isn't, then we're just all sitting back watching a movie and it, none of it matters. So it's it's just very the idea of eternity, too, is just bizarre. That's a contradiction because, yeah, I mean, I bet the, the eternity forever. Yeah, I, I, I could imagine you going crazy. Uh, yeah. So like yeah. there'll be a point where you don't even recognize who you are anymore or even remember what you did. Like it's guaranteed. It's infinite time. Well, <laughs> the me. apologetics would be that um, there is no time outside of the universe or whatever. But then you have to ask yourself this question, which raises another contradiction. <laughs> Does God think sequentially? And if he does, which he apparently he does in the Bible, then he's temporal. He's one thought leads oh. to another thought leads to another. That's time, right? Then he's subject to How the laws that of time. Hmm. Right. Yeah, he created time at the same time, too. That makes no sense. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Five, I saw your hand raised. You want to say something? Go for it. Yeah, I was uh, <clears throat> just about, uh, you know, free will in heaven. Um, you know, if heaven is a place that all good people go mm -hmm. at, in order to love and worship God, do you, do you have free will? And mm -hmm. if you don't have free will, are you still the same person you were when you were on earth, when you Fantastic did have free question. will, right? Fantastic so. question. Yeah. Um, I will say this, and this is a weird point. I know the story of Job is not literal. But we've had conversations on this show where we've where I've talked to Christian apologists who believe that not only is that story literal, but is the best story in the entire Bible. Right. And the, <laughs> and the problem with that is it's a really horrendous story on a moral Terrible. moral front. But it begins with the devil being escorted to heaven to hang out with God, and and you know and and that is objectively, at least from the Bible perspective, the worst person hanging out with objectively the best person to do bets on people's lives for fun. And the I weirdest wish part- they don't know the outcome. <laughs> <laughs> and the weirdest part is, I feel like if anything, this is a story of the devils trying to secretly show people who are reading the Bible with an awareness and a critical thought of like, look how screwed up this guy is. I'm gonna go up to his home and I'm gonna bet on the lives of the people he created and he claims to love. And it's going to make it look like I'm the bad guy and I was wrong. But the real moral of the story, if you're actually looking at it right, is this is the evil dude, this God guy. He's the real bad guy. He's the person betting, doing terrible things. And when he wins, he just makes new wives and new children and new sheep and says, ah, you're basically net. Basically, net so you have the same amount of property. <laughs> the same amount of property, yeah. yeah. And... And again, yeah, like I think Larry, you hit it on the nail. They, they set up the bet with it. You hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. You, uh, yeah, I saw Boudreaux looking yeah. at that too. It's just like, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, Dale, I want to hear from you. Do you have any comments on hell or the devil or anything that we talked about today? Uh, I was just thinking of Mark Twain, thinking, making a statement that uh, actually heaven involves a whole lot of things that most people try to avoid on earth. Um, like church. <laughs> like church, like singing, like singing hymns and such as that. Uh, I'm... I'm the, you know, this this Christian bashing is really just going in circles and going in circles. Well, let's look at some contradictions of the atheists. One of the primary thing of the atheists is now is that, uh, or that's been proposed, is that the universe came from nothing. 
Is that no, who's? So, I don't uh, say that. I'm an atheist. No. Yeah, well, Lawrence you're Krause, not. Some, uh, Larry knows about it. L Lawrence oh, Krauss. There are some that do. So some people say things, but how does that represent atheism? It's like that's right. Atheism. Well, well atheism represents... is a position on God, though. Yeah, right. it's not the. It's not that claim at all. That's a but maybe well, there's a the problem. It does seem like a contradiction. Um, I'm an atheist. Like, but, yeah. believe that the matter of the universe has always existed in one form or another. I don't yeah. believe it came from nothing. And I think but, time well, is necessarily based on objective phenomenon. So look, if you can't observe physics. it, who's to claim time exists or not? But Do you have another, it's easier to um, say it's easier to say atheists are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. say things well, like often, often, you know, the atheist should come up with the with a good answer for uh, if there's creation, why is there no creator? Uh, that would be well, an creation is a word that is loaded and usually used by people who believe in a creator. Well, when you have a cup, the cup has been created. When you have a tree, the tree has been created from the history of the uh, uh, genes that are in the tree or the. Uh, well, you can say it evolved, go on you don't back. have to use the but word creation. There is, there is a creation. There are creations when there is a creator. Now, uh, right. trees weren't right. created per se. They no, were they weren't. <clears throat> they are the descendants of the previous trees that came before them. And there was a time when there were no trees, according to... Uh, right. And they evolved. According to, mm -hmm. Yeah, they evolved. But what I'm saying um, is creator is a loaded word. Yeah. 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 Agency and, is okay too. Yeah. And you could you can easily fall into a special pleading fallacy because yeah. then you would say if well if everything has to be created because that's in our experience that everything had a creator so there's a contradiction. Well if you're going to say that then who created God? Yeah. You can't say I, everything yes. God. I, right. Yeah, that's say that's an old saw. I'd say what's really unfortunate is when someone claims that atheism is making any more of a claim than I don't believe your God exists. Please come up with better evidence. And there's no other oh. statement in the, the grand book of atheism than that. Like if you look up atheism and in, in, if there was a instructional booklet for atheism, it literally is a thousand page one document page. with one sentence on the first mm -hmm. page. It's like, I don't believe you. <laughs> but and that's the only thing that says it. I, to Dale's hey, credit, yeah. Just the, real quick, to Dale's Go credit, I will say that some atheists I do find um, contradictions, like especially Gnost what they call Gnostic atheists, yeah. when they say yeah. there is absolutely no metaphysical reality. Well, that's a metaphysical claim in itself. Yeah, but that's so also a Gnostic kind of position, non atheist. Right, position. a Gnostic atheist, exactly. Specific to the Gnostic atheist. Yeah, and I don't like well, Gnostics <laughs> in general, uh, whether they're yeah, atheist or here. atheist. Me neither. We, uh, th there's a question that came to my mind about atheists, and perhaps you could help with this. I've heard it said that the uh, weak atheist or the moderate atheist, if you will, uh, believes that uh, only makes the statement that I see no evidence for a god. I see no evidence, but uh, e even very, very high atheists, then oh, you right. ask them, well, what evidence would you accept to believe in a God? And I've heard plenty of atheists say, there's no evidence whatsoever that you would give me that would make me believe in a God. I don't so that. it seems like yeah. a circular yeah. argument in that I have seen no evidence, and furthermore, I will not accept any evidence. So. So we have like three minutes left in the show. So just to respond to this, just because it, it is an old hat argument that we've heard. Uh, the idea of people say this, therefore it represents the the thing that, the, the label that you believe are two different things. It's the same thing of scientists say this, therefore science says this. And there are atheists that say, I don't like bagels, but that doesn't mean atheism is about not liking bagels. In the same sense that I can wear a red hat it doesn't make me a Republican. I can just wear a red hat. So mm -hmm. we have to look at the idea of there are individuals and many groups, many people in a particular group that can say something, but what is the common denominator of this group? And the common denominator of atheism is, I don't believe you when you say you have enough evidence for me to be compelled to be convinced that you believe that this God actually is real, or I don't believe your God. That's all that means. And everything else on top of that is atheism plus something else. Dread Pyre, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, wait, Eric, you went through the trouble of actually getting props. Let's go over your props, and then we can close up the show. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's just a lovely, lovely argument to hear, but basically the Dawkins scale, and there are other scales that get exactly what Dale is saying. Gnosticism and atheism are two different dimensions, hmm. and I think everybody here 
the that is arguing for atheism is a Gnostic atheist. They they are an atheist. They don't believe in God, but they don't know there's no God. You mean agnostic? Agnostic, agnostic, agnostic yeah. right? Agnostic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Does that? That's what I meant. To say. Yeah. But and then and I, I'm not. An, I'm not an agnostic. <laughs> You're not an agnostic atheist. No, I'm an atheist. Period. Okay, yeah. but but we're talking about it's, two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's a confusing thing yeah. for a lot of other people. But it is. when you talk to them in a short as a five minute conversation, you'd be surprised how much we agree on mm-hmm. these really, really basic yeah. concepts. We have unfortunately a history of a lot of loaded words, and we have a language based on those w- loaded words to try to communicate with. It takes the effort, especially in a big group conversation, to parse what we mean by what we say. And from what I'm hearing from certain people is, I don't understand where you're coming from. This is my impression of where you're coming from. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's like, I agree that doesn't make sense, but that's not where I'm coming from. That's Those generally this entire important. Zoom conversation in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. hey, listen, like I said, uh, there are some atheists that don't like bagels. Atheism is not about not liking bagels, even though many prominent atheists probably say they don't like bagels. And I like bagels. So what's our thing that we have in common? That's something that we should look for. And there are contradictions in the Bible. We just went through a lot of them. So logically, it doesn't seem like that is a good basis for believing in a Christian God, but we see these same things, contradictory fallacies in, in Greek, Roman. In all of them. Jehovah Witness, right. yeah, typically there's the case. But the them. basic line is, if something's asking you to worship it, probably doesn't deserve to be worshipped. And that's that's something that I always like to keep in my back pocket. Larry, you yelled at me at the beginning of the show that we were under time. So guess no, what? I didn't. You got You got a full <laughs> five minutes after we're done with this. Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? So uh, I'm in uh, uh, Western Canada. So for me, it's uh, two hours ahead of... Uh, your guys this time and so i live stream this on my youtube channel at mind pirate m-i-n-d-p-y-r-a-t-e at eight o'clock a.m so come check it out and participate in the conversation as we stream it stream it live cool george i'm gonna say you screwed up because not only could should you have done hebrew school but you would have been able to have all the Yiddish phrases in your back pocket, along with your New York accent. You could have been no, like, no, 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 this see, Meshuggah I, is a I, bunch I, of Yiddish, Yiddish. snarples. See, <laughs> I, 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 I got it. That's offensive. Yiddish, I apologize. Yiddish is a, it's a cultural thing. So I, ah. got, I got some Yiddish. Okay. Okay. You know? Good, 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 good. Uh, Eric uh, Boudreau, I want you to not have any pressure on you with producing content, but if there was, I want to know what that, um, you're doing a cover band of what was it bad omen bad religion bad religion how's that coming along um i I think we're done with the recording they're mixing it and they're video editing it so should have it should have it next week if Um, you're cool if you're comfortable with it we'd love to put it on the show as a mid-show break Uh, yeah a fun connection between dale and um wombat's comments um samuel clemens uh also known as mark twain uh, was born and died and got to see Haley's Comet twice. <gasps> Whoa, yeah. very cool. One of, nice. One of the very few people that, yeah. Doubtfire, I'll throw it out to you before we head out with Doubt, Doubter 5. Is there anything that you'd like to recommend that we check out? This is a great topic, by the way. Yeah, sure. Just meet me where it's going down, man, at my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Williamson. We nice. can talk all about it. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Feel free to leave a comment on the show, guys, on Let's Chat. Data 5, take us out. Hey, excuse me, this has been Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Be sure to visit digitalfreethought.com and our blog. Uh, we have a radio show archives there, atheist songs, articles on the subject. By the way, my book is called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. <clears throat> if you're having trouble leaving religion and religious beliefs behind, there's a group out there for you called Re- Recovering From Religion. You can find them at re- recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, thanks to Dale for bringing up these questions about atheism. They're very important. Uh, yep. We do need to address them as they come up for sure. If you have any questions about the show, you can send, send them to Ask an Atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of new episodes. And remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We see you next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.